I'd like to get us started by introducing Dr. Greg Riley. Uh, he is the Vice Chair of the Clinical Trials Office in the Department of Medicine at Memorial Sloan, Cancer, uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. He's a longtime friend of mine. He's been one of the more integral people in the entire story of EGFR uh, mutations since the very beginning and has contributed a lot to our direct knowledge of what there is. In fact, all of our program uh, faculty are people who are giving their time but are the people who have been making this story. So with that, let me happily introduce Greg Riley. Thanks, Jack, and uh, I, I put my Twitter handle up here on, on the screen, I, and that's because of Jack that I've ever found Twitter, so um, I don't tweet that much, but from time to time I put something on there. Uh, thanks for everybody being here. I mean, I think this is a, a tremendous opportunity for the doctors to speak directly with the patients. Uh, you know, we, we speak individually with people in the room every day, but, uh, but this is a great opportunity for us to, to, to teach uh, in a way that we don't get to do very often. So. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, so they wanted me to give a, a, a relative intro uh, to, to you guys about uh, the topic of acquired resistance. And normally when I give a talk uh, on lung cancer and acquired resistance, the first five slides or so talk about lung cancer in general, uh, the scope of the problem, you know, and, and some of the characteristics of patients and things like that. I'm not going to go through those slides. You guys know that stuff. I don't need to, to go through it at all. And I'm going to jump right into the topic of acquired resistance and, and what it is. So I think the first thing that I want to try to uh, differentiate is acquired resistance and primary resistance. So next, oh, there we go. Uh, primary resistance is, is, is something that's a little bit different than the problem of acquired resistance that we're going to focus on today. Uh, you'll probably see a lot of these waterfall plots, and uh, waterfall plots are graphs that show individual patients. Each bar represents an individual patient and the best response of their cancer to treatment uh, with a drug. And so this, is, this happens to be the waterfall plot for crizotinib in ALK-positive lung cancer. And so what you see is each bar with a, a representing a patient on the far right are patients who had significant shrink shrinkage of the cancer, so 100% shrinkage of the cancer, uh, all the way to the left where a handful of patients uh, have had their tumor grow. Uh, the the y-axis goes up, and so they've had 20 to 40, 60 percent growth of the cancer. Uh, so the, the people on the left uh, who've had the unfortunate uh, immediate growth of the cancer, they're, they're technically qualified as primary resistance, and that's, again, not going to be really the focus of things. Instead, today, we're going to be focusing on acquired resistance. And that's best amp exemplified by a patient like this. This is a patient of mine who who had, um, and you see on the first picture, uh, this is an x-ray, a chest x-ray, uh, where the, the black area is lungs, uh, and in the bottom of the right lung, which is on the far right of the, uh, or sorry, far left uh, here, you see there's, there's a, some evidence of cancer. And then the middle chest x-ray, you see some clearing of that uh, cancer from the bottom uh, part of the lung. And then on the uh, far right, the, the last x-ray, it starts to come back. And so that's really the problem of acquired resistance, an initial response to treatment and then growth of the cancer. When we're looking at it in a waterfall plot, it's these patients who've had a great response on the right part of the waterfall plot who then have evidence of cancer growth that we're talking about. And so I've, I've kind of oriented you to these waterfall plots because I think people might show them from time to time, time, to time today. Uh, and I also wanted to do the, um, uh, just a survival curve. This is a, a, what we call a survival curve, and that's a, a statistical term, um, meaning uh, time till an event occurs. And so this is a progression-free survival curve, uh, and this is time until a patient has had evidence of cancer growth. And you see, uh, on this graph, this is a, the randomized trial comparing crizotinib to chemotherapy for patients with ALK-positive lung cancer previously treated with chemotherapy. And you see that the, uh, the graph drops down each time a patient has evidence of progression, uh, 